Card. It's the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. It's the second race of the day, the second of three races this weekend. I'm Chris Hartley, and you are in for a treat. We saw some very good racing, not necessarily for the leading race, number one, but some excellent racing a little bit further back inside the points. Uh, we have got a very different looking grid than we had this morning because there were two very different qualifying sessions yesterday. The first qualifying session which set the grid for race number one was held on a drying track it was a little bit of a lottery where it was a case of if you're on the track on the last lap in the right place at the right time you got the better run of it whereas it was more of a dry straight session for the second qualifying session so it's a different look to the grid you very quickly saw the grid we'll see it again before the race starts and there on screen you can see a shot of wet tires at the ready and slick tires I would guess still on all of the cars the reason being that about 10 minutes before the cars were heading up to the Park Ferme area, the holding area to go out onto the track. It started to shower, it wasn't meant to rain today, it might well rain tomorrow. So it's just had a little shower or two, but uh, certainly not wet conditions yet, but it's certainly something they need to bear in mind. Uh, so you just saw the pole position driver taking his first pole position, Max Gunther, the German driver for Prima Power Team. And there is his teammate, Nick Cassidy, who's going to be starting the race from second on the grid. So Max Gunther, in his second season of Formula 3 racing, took uh, a win at the Norris Ring in F3 last year. Eighth place overall in the championship. Nick Cassidy is still looking for his first win, but this is going to be his first full season in the championship. But he was second in the race earlier on today. And there is Mikkel Jensen, who starts third for the KFZ Tyler 24 Muka Motorsport team. Their only driver, their only representative here this weekend. And uh, he'll be hoping for a better start than he had in race number one. He started, uh, was he third row of the grid for race number one, but had a terrible start went nearly to the back of the field and had to fight his way back, but didn't get into the points in the end, so he needs a good run here. Uh, there is Ralph Aron, who is, uh, was on the rookie podium earlier, on the young Estonian, doing a terrific job uh, to finish up in uh, well up in the points overall in seventh place in his first F3 outing. He was the Formula 4 champion of Italy last year. He's just 18 years of age, and also the year before that did some Formula Renault racing in the North European Championship. So Ralph Aron makes it three Prima Power Team cars in the top four on the grid for this one. Uh, there is another newcomer to Formula 3 racing, Joel Eriksson from Sweden for the German team, uh, Motor Park. And uh, Eriksson, only 17 years of age, comes from uh, Tomelili in the southern part of Sweden, uh, second in the German Formula 4 championship last year. And... Uh, also raced in the Formula Masters Championship the year before that. And Joel Eriksson was another one that uh, gave a good account of himself in that first race to uh, finish in uh, sixth place overall, second best rookie. And another good qualifying session for him, putting him uh, right up there, fifth on the grid for this one. Callum Eilat's going to start the race in sixth place. And there he is in the number six car. Uh, driver of the race, really, in the first race because he had to start at the back. Uh, the reason he had to start at the back was the fact that uh, he had to change his engine, had to borrow a chassis uh, after a fire in the car during testing on Thursday. So a bad start to the weekend, but it was a good recovery to get up into the points, up to 10th place for Callum. And I was speaking to him after the race, and he said, actually, I couldn't see the start lights. I was that far back. I had Arjun Miney's rear wing right in my face, and I couldn't see the start lights. I had a guess when the race was started, but he was very pleased with his pace and the way he was able to look after his tyres towards the end end of his race. You saw the driver that won uh, the rookie category on his first outing, Ben Bar Barneycoat there. Uh, had a chat with him uh, about half an hour ago as well. Uh, really nice chap, really uh, fitting into the team brilliantly and uh, just said I felt right at home uh, early on in my uh, Formula 3 testing days. I felt good in the race uh, and I felt like I should maybe be pushing for third place. I felt like I maybe should be trying to catch George, but then I just reined myself in and thought, let's get the points, let's get a finish. It's our first uh, full season as a team with High Tech GP. Let's, uh, let's get the job done. And there you see the number one car of Lance Stroll, not the uh, driver that was champion last year, but it's the team that won the championship with Felix Rosenquist, the Swedish driver who's concentrating on DTM testing as a reserve driver for Mercedes and also racing in the Indy Lights Championship, which he's doing this weekend with another ex-F3 racer, Ed Jones, who's there with the Carlin uh, motorsport team. Uh, but number one on the car, and uh, Lance Stroll hoping that he is the number one at the end of the year. He's certainly the championship leader already, having won the first race of the weekend. More about that in a moment, because there was a very interesting press conference at the uh, end of the race. You look at Antoine Hubert there, who's going to be starting ninth and uh, was in quite a big battle in the first race but sadly uh, a lot further down the order than he would have liked feels, feels he's got good pace here but it hasn't quite hooked it up so far and it was a very good start for that young man Harrison Newey for Van Amersfoort Racing another newcomer to the championship somebody else that's come up through the 
uh, Formula 4 route, but racing uh, mostly in national Formula 4. Harrison Newey, just 17 years of age. He raced in the uh, BRDC, the British Racing Drivers Club Formula 4 Championship, the British-based championship last year, and was runner-up in that. But he has done some racing uh, in France and in Germany in Formula 4 before this weekend. And Nico Carey there, another uh, new face on the grid. There are nine, or well, there are going to be nine rookies in the championship this year, once they all appear. And uh, Nico Curry there, the Finnish driver, got himself some points as well on his first race. Well up there in eighth place overall, the 16-year-old who has only had one season of car racing, but he's already had seven wins in uh, the Northern European Formula 4 Championship and he's already received the attentions of Red Bull, the junior academy member he has become. Uh, Nikita Mazipan is another uh, newcomer, the Russian driver there, Mazipan from Moscow, 17 years of age, and he's been signed up as a development driver uh, for Force India, for the Formula One team, Force India. So uh, certainly he's got uh, some attention already. And uh, he there in the Mercedes powered high tech GP team, the new team, uh, well, newish team. They're about 12 months old. High tech is a name that's been around Formula Three in years gone by, but high tech GP is a new version of that team formed 12 months ago. Did a couple of guest races in F3 this year. It's going to be their first championship. And Guan Yuju, that the Chinese driver who has had such a successful casting career junior uh, European champion of the Rotax Max Euro Challenge 125cc karts, raced in Britain and was based in Britain for a couple of years as well, won the British Championships, second in the senior championships, moved into cars a couple of years ago. Uh, he said he was struggling with straight line speed when I spoke to him before they headed up to the grid, uh, so that's been his main problem, but uh, not quite as happy as he uh, as he normally is, but uh, I said you've done you know, pretty well so far. He's been hovering around 13th, 14th on his debut, but he'll be wanting more than that, and I'm sure it'll come. Uh, there's the number four car of uh, the Carlin driver, Alessio Larandi, the Italian who is a former world karting champion, raced in the championship last year for the Van Amersfoort team, which has uh, got new premises over the winter, the Dutch team, and uh, new livery on the car. All looks very good, but they have uh, had a few problems so far this weekend. So he's moved across to the Carlin team, which has also struggled a bit this weekend. Chatted with Raoul Hyman, who's another one that now races for them, having switched from the West Tech team. Uh, there he is in the number 16 car. And he said, we're not far off. It's just a, you know, a tenth here and a tenth there. But uh, he's very impressed with Carlin coming into the team, uh, even on his first drive in the car in testing, where the wing mirrors weren't quite right for him, the seat wasn't quite right for him in terms of its position. He said it still felt like a brilliant car. And uh, we haven't quite hooked it up this weekend, but I'm very positive for the season ahead. And there is one of his two teammates at Carlin, uh, Ryan Tvetter there, the American driver who's in his second season, raced with the, uh, the satellite team of Carlin last year, Jagonia I am with Carlin. He took Tom Blomqvist to the runner-up spot in the championship two years ago. Behind uh, Mr. Manacon and ahead of Max Verstappen, who finished third in the championship. Tom moving on now to race in DTM in his first season last year. And there is Pedro Pique, who had uh, a lively race, didn't quite get into the points, but he pulled off some good moves. He was involved in a very good battle on the fringe of the top 10. Comes from Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, He's 17 years of age. And for the last two years running, he has been the Brazilian F3 champion. And he is, of course, as the name would suggest, and the helmet design would suggest. Uh, if you uh, were around watching Formula One in the 80s and 90s, he's the son of Nelson Piquet, the Formula One world champion in 1981, 1983 and 1987. Twice for Brabham and once for Williams, big rival, of course, to Nigel Mansell back in the late 1980s. So there is the grid formed up, 21 cars there are. New, other news to tell you about, Arjun Mine was the only driver to retire from the first race. He would have been lining up 18th on the grid. He's got a 10-place grid penalty, but under the new rules, only for this one race rather than in the past. If you changed engine, uh, it could have penalised you for three races uh, because it's not a standard engine change because it was caused by something else, uh, which was a piece of plastic, uh, the team tells me. It got sucked into the air, air intake. So a small piece of plastic sucked into the air intake, a really random thing. Uh, the team said we only ever hear of that happening to other people. It's not the sort of thing that happens on a regular basis. I asked them what they thought the plastic might be, whether it was off a tear-off or a marker. They said, actually, we don't know because it was so melted. We couldn't tell what it was, but it went into the air intake. The temperatures went through the roof and Sergeant had to retire the car. So that's a problem this weekend, but the team, uh, the T-Sport team, the three-bond engine, uh, power unit behind them, have been very impressed with the young Indian driver. Had some star drives last year and are hopeful for the season ahead. So we'll see what he can do. He won't be starting dead last, though. That will still be George Russell, who, if you were watching earlier on, you would have heard me talking about what a great qualifying session he had, second qualifying session in particular. He should have been starting second on the grid 
for this race and the race tomorrow. But uh, you have to have, at the end of the qualifying session, the rule is you have to have a kilogram of fuel left in the car. There was something like 100 millilitres under, so not very much at all. George, uh, therefore, was excluded and has to start this race and the race tomorrow from dead last. But he will take heart from the fact that Callum Eilock was able to get into the points in race one from the back of the grid. I mentioned that to George when I spoke to him after the race. He said, oh, I didn't realise Callum had got to the points. Well, there you go, then. You can, you can bet that George will have a big go here. He certainly got the speed to come forwards. He was rather puzzled, and the team were rather puzzled as to why they had ended up being with not enough fuel in the tank, because he said we did one less lap than we had anticipated. All the calculations were that we'd have a lot of fuel left in the tank at the end. We'd be well over, so they were somewhat bemused as to why that had happened. But it did, I'm afraid, and it's rather ruined what, what might have been a fabulous weekend for him, having been on the podium earlier on. Uh, now, the first race was won by Lance Stroll. His teammate Nick Cassidy was second. George Russell was in third place. And in the press conference after the race, uh, it was quite interesting because... Uh, at the, you may remember that uh, if you watched, Nick Cassidy got the better start, led the first lap, and then uh, he claims he, he went into, he, he took first gear by mistake rather than second gear coming out of the last corner, and therefore at the end of lap number one, Lance Stroll simply drove past him and in, into the lead of the race. So that was what Nick Cassidy said. And then uh, on the press conference, we heard a couple of minutes later from George Russell, who was very forthright, very straight talking and suggested that it was a great shame for Nick that he had uh, effectively, according to George, been asked to move over for Lance Stroll and give the position up. And George was inferring that there were team orders at Prema and that he didn't have anybody like that in his team to be his uh, wingman. And he said it was a shame for the championship if that was going to be the case if team orders were coming into play in the first on the first lap of the first race of the season. So that was George's very forthright opinion. Of course, to give two sides, as I said, Nick Cassidy and Prema were saying they just made a mistake coming out of the last corner. But certainly there's a little bit of rivalry brewing up there between the two teams and between, uh, in particular, those two drivers. Lance Stroll had a chat with him earlier on, congratulated him on his second victory, took a win at Hockenheim at the end of last season. He's further back on the grid for this one. He said, we just couldn't quite hook it up. Uh, just one of those things. We just uh, didn't get a clear lap in. Uh, didn't get the best out of the car, so that's why we're a bit further back, but clearly we're happy with the pace. So there is the pole position man, Max Gunther, for Prima Power Team. What can he do here? He was uh, a strong fifth in the first race from eighth on the grid, alongside Nick Cassidy, two teammates. Then Mikkel Jensen, third on the grid for Muka Motorsport, another Prima driver. He's fourth on the grid, Ralph Aron. The red lights come on, it's a 33-minute plus one lap race. The revs build, the lights go out, and we are racing here at Paul Ricard in France. Not a good start at all for Max Gunther. He's going to get sucked into the pack here. It's going to be Nick Cassidy that leads the race. And I reckon Ralph Ferron is going to get through to second place. Then there's contact, a wheel car up on two wheels. Two, three, four cars damaged. One of them is Ben Barnico. What a shame for him. And that was all a melee that was going on behind. There's a Prima car involved in that as well and possibly a motor park car as well. Was it Ericsson? So, yeah, Maxi Gunther was the one uh, Prima car. And number 20 is Harrison Newey, the Van Amersfoort driver that's got tangled up in that. There were a couple of others as well. Very tight through that first uh, corner. We had a little uh, moment. Ah, first safety car of the year. First safety car of the year. We had many of these last year. We're all commenting on how good it was to have a race without a safety car in race one. But that was just one of those incidents, I think. And because it's a relatively short lap, a relatively quick lap. They're left with no choice but to bring the safety car out. They won't get it cleared up in time. Ben Barnicote walking away uh, from the incident there. So there are the three cars that have come to grief. There are at least a couple more that were definitely involved in that. Harrison Newey, what a shame for him after picking up points in his uh, first race. And his uh, father, Adrian Newey, chief technical officer of the Red Bull Formula One team, is due to be on the podium presenting the trophies later. We'll be very disappointed. Let's see if we can figure out what happened then. It was lively on the way to the first corner. Max Gunther got sucked into it. A bit of locking up. Ben Barnicote clips over the curbs. The car that went up onto two wheels was the number 22 machine of Joel Ericsson. So I thought it was the motor park car, and it was. All sorts of other cars tangled up. Broken front left suspension for Ben Barnicote. Damage to the other two cars, including Batman Maxi Gunther. Absolutely furious. You're on pole position. You're thinking, right, first, uh, first victory of the year here. Yeah, surely we can get one but it wasn't to be. Bad start, I'm afraid, and Harrison Newey tangled up in all of that as well. Very disappointing uh, for him after a very impressive uh, performance. 
terms of the team's championship, uh, just to update you, each team can nominate two drivers for the race weekend. So they'd have to be the same for the season. But if you've got more than two drivers, you nominate two drivers that will be your point-scoring drivers. And although Harrison Newey got in the points, he wasn't one of the nominated drivers for Van Amersfoort. There you can see Adrian Newey to the left of the uh, picture. Tom Dillman, the racing driver, in there as, uh, as well. F3 racer involved with the team. I'm sure Adrian's seen it all before with all of his years and experience of things going wrong at first corners, but uh, very frustrated that it's happened to his son. Very good driver himself, Adrian Newey. Raced at Le Mans and lots of historical racing success. You know, Barney Coke sort of triggered it, went over the curbs, and then it was a chain effect. Oh, that straw was the other one in the background, wasn't it, that got tangled up in that. So he's not going to be the championship leader for much longer. It's all under investigation. But two or three of the drivers there were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Disappointment to the British drivers there. The black race suit, that's Harrison Newey. And uh, calm on the exterior, but I wonder what he's thinking inside. This, unfortunately, though, of course, is racing, isn't it? It's not always down to what you do. There are many, many other factors that could ruin your day. But uh, he'll take heart from that good performance in race one. And he's got another race to come. I'll fix the car for sure. There is uh, Ben Barnico. I was hoping for a bit of rain, actually. He said it went very well in the wet uh, test sessions up there, so not going to get the chance here. So, what's the order? Nick Cassidy, we know, got the lead of the race. Callum Eilat has gone second. Up to Ralph Arrock, because he made a good start, but he's down in 18th, so he must have either got caught up in the tail of that or had another moment. But Ralph, initially off the line, looked like he was going to get second place. So it's Nick Cassidy that leads the way for Prema. Then it's Callum Eilat up there in second place for Van Amersfoort who are looking for their first team points of the year. Mikkel Jensen is third for Mookie Motorsport. And in fourth place, best rookie, Guan Yu Zhu. So the Chinese driver for Motorpark, who is backed by uh, Ferrari for a couple of seasons now. He's been on the Ferrari Driver Academy development programme. And uh, he is there, fourth place. Antoine Hubert has got through the melee as well and is in fifth place. Ryan Tavita is in sixth position. Sergio Seti Camara is ninth. He had a seat. It all went wrong for him on the first corner of the first race. This time it's gone the other way. He's been able to gain a lot of places as a result of the collisions. In eighth place, we've got Nikita Matipen, the Russian driver, as we look at Ben Barnico, the Derbyshire-based driver, looking uh, very, well, fairly calm on the outside, but we're very disappointed, of course. It was a good opportunity to get some more points. Uh, we've got Alessio Larandi in ninth place, Raul Hyman in tenth, so a couple of carling cars up there. Nico Caddy in eleventh, Pedro Pique twelfth, George Russell has come up to thirteenth, Arjun Miner has come up to fourteenth. So Arjun Miner, the Indian driver, making good progress, as is George Russell. There, Russell is in car number twelve, Martini is in car fifteen. Zai Kong Lee is up to eighteenth, Joel Eriksson. No, uh, sorry, Zai Kong Lee is fifteenth, Joel Eriksson is sixteenth, Ralph Aron seventeenth. And out, Lance Stroll, Max Gunther, Ben Barnico, and Harrison Newey. So those are the drivers that definitely have not been able to continue. The safety car is coming in on this lap. So that's the news. There is the number 12 car of George Russell. Who quite outspoken, as I said in the press conference at the end of the first race. And with a chance to get into the points now. Callum Eilat, as I said, did it 21st to 10th in race number one. Said they messed up really his uh, qualifying in Q1 on the drying track. He thought he had two more laps to go instead of one. Callum might have been, he reckoned, fourth on the grid in that first race. Otherwise, he is up there now, he's in second place as the race gets underway. Perfect restart though for Nick Cassidy as he flies across the start finish line. But further back, there's going to be some drama here. Antoine Huber is coming under attack from the black and blue machine of Ryan Tevita, and the American has to go on the outside line because there's no way through on the inside. That line is well and truly covered by Antoine Hubert, who is one of few drivers in this field to have raced here before. But last time he raced here, it was on the long circuit. So he said, actually, it's not been that much help to me, uh, that past experience. But uh, he does look pretty rapid. His qualifying position, that really, I think, tell the story of how quick the French driver is. So he's got a bit of a lucky break here. Let's see if he can make the most of it. But up front, a familiar sight to Prima car in the lead of the race, but it's Nick Cassidy, the New Zealander, looking for his first win in this championship. He's been an F3 winner before because he was the Japanese F3 champion of last season. And there we can see Raul Hyman, number 19, right on the gearbox of number 11, Nikiti Mazipan. 
the rookie there, the Russian driver, the number 11 car, up into the points at the moment, looking for his first points in only his second race. But Raul Hyman, who said they made a few tweaks to the car, they were struggling with the back end a bit, the tyres were going off. The wind apparently was a factor in that first race, and something I didn't realise, looking out the window and looking on the TV pictures, was that at the start of the first race, there were still one or two damp patches. Well, it was greasy rather than damp. So that was why Lance Stroll was saying he struggled off the line a bit. Others said the same as we see a move there at the inside. Sweetly done by Joel Erickson, number 22, to gain a place on what was his icon lead to get up to 15th position. To try and uh, defend now, you can see number five, PK, looking to pick up a toe here. We've seen that he's not afraid to attack. Gets alongside the black number 22 machine of Joel Erickson, the motor park car, but can't find a way through. So good scrap going on there. It's for 13th and 14th positions. So it's PK that he passed initially. PK then trying to get him back. There is somebody who's always worth watching. Very entertaining Italian driver, Alessio uh, Lorandi. And Lorandi up to eighth place now in the number four machine. His next target is the Brazilian driver, Sergio Setti Camara. So it's Cassidy in the lead. Ilot second. Jensen third. Ju still fourth. Hubert fifth. And uh, then Tevita Setti Camaro in sixth and seventh. Lorandi eighth. Mazipan in ninth. And Hyman is in the points in 10th place. And up to 12th now has come George Russell. So he's only two places off being in the points. And that safety car, of course, robbed him of a couple of laps of overtaking. But of course, it kept the field bunched together. So, and he got through all the, all the melee. Sometimes there is an argument to say you're better off on a crowded first corner being at the back of the field than you are in the middle of the pack. Because that's where all concertinas up. And you can see him hunting down now, Nico Cani, the finish driver. So the number 12 machine, the silver, red and black car of George Russell in his second season of racing. He's been a winner in every season he's done so far, which is not many of car racing. Formula 4, the British Formula 4 champion the year before last. Won on his first weekend in F3 at Silverstone. And there is Lance Stroll, very disappointed, uh, no doubt, with, well, still keeping a smile on his face, but looked like he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time in that incident. So we'll, we'll see, maybe get another replay later on, but... Uh, either, either way, he's out of the points, isn't he? And he's not going to add to the 25 points that he already picked up. If it stays like th this, Nick Cassidy's teammate's going to move into the championship lead. Early days, of course, there's 30 races. This is race two of the season, but he will pick up the uh, championship lead. As now we see the number 19 machine of Raul Hyman trying to go around the outside. What a move from the South African driver here, but not making it easy for him is Mazipan. And uh, the Russian driver stayed with him all the way around that uh, right-hand section. But in the end, he had to relent, and Mazipen had to give the place up. So a lovely move, that, from Raul Hyman. And that puts him up to ninth place. So the changes have been good. Carlin, the team, vastly, vastly experienced, of course. And Raul Hyman, definitely a, a promising young driver. Still only 19. Comes from Durban in South Africa. Raced in the British Formula 4 Championship. Moved to Britain, finished third in that in his second season in 2014 and managed to pick up four points finishes last year as a Team West Tech driver. His best result so far in his career, a sixth place finish. There is the double winner. Oh, that's a lunge up the inside from uh, Guan Yu Zhu. Runs wide there, and Mikkel Jensen gets back ahead of him. So we just saw the back end of that, but Jensen had got through at the start of the lap. Guan Yu Zhu tried to get him back under braking, uh, just took a bit too much speed into the corner, and back through went Mikkel Jensen. So those two scrapping away. Uh, for what will be the final spot on the podium. There is number two, Nick Cassidy, in the lead of the race. The New Zealander, 1.2 seconds clear, and he's just set the fastest first sector of anybody. So he's given himself another tenth of a second over Callum Eilat, the British driver there in second place for Van Sport Racing. Callum Eilat coming from uh, six on the grid for this one. And then we've got third place, this battle between Nicole Jensen, the Orange Book Motorsport car, number seven, number 23, Guan Yu Xu, uh, in the mix as well. I mentioned uh, David Beckerman. David Beckerman, who is the, who will be the teammate to Nicole Jensen, but he's not old enough yet to race. He's only 15. He is here and itching to go. There's a replay of that switchback between the pair of them side by side, but uh, cool driving from Nicole Jensen to just let the Chinese driver take it out wide and then get him on the way back out of the corner. Saw it coming. The speed is coming up now. Fastest in the first sector on the last lap was Callum Eilat. Fastest in the middle sector was Guan Hu Zhu. Fastest in the third sector was Mikkel Jensen. So they're all trading uh, faster sector times here. And there's not very much at all between that lead group in terms of their pace. Cassidy is exactly a second clear of the second place man, Eilat. And then 
just got seven tenths of a second back to Michael Jensen that a train of cars went Yuzhu. Bit of contact here, number nine, Sergio Seti Kamara coming under attack from Raul Hyman, who wants to get another place up the order here. This is the battle for eighth position. Seti Kamara has already lost the place to Alessio Larandi, so Larandi passed him on the previous lap, and now he's coming under fire from Raul Hyman, who's again trying to sweep around the outside here in the number 19 machine. The black and orange Carly car, will have to be careful not to give his own place up though to Massey Penn. The Russian driver is coming back around him in the number 11 car, the silver car. Great action here in the middle of the pack and a bit of a twitch then from Raul Hyman who's going to surely lose the place now. The number 11 car's got the better traction, the better momentum, but no, Hyman's not going to give it away at all. And although he loses a ton of time to the man he was initially attacking, set it Kamara, he somehow holds on to his ninth place without queuing up behind him now. It's so close in Formula 3, it's like kart racing. You make one mistake on one corner and they're all coming past you. Tight squeeze up the inside there from Pico again to place as well. That was a tidy move on Joel Eriksson to get him up into the 12th place now. So number five, Pico, who's got plenty of F3 experience, of course, going well. And it's going to be three abreast again here as they all fan out. Number 22 going on the attack is Joel Eriksson trying to get through. Just behind is uh, Ralph on number 16. You've got number 10, Nico Kali in there as well, the finish driver. Tremendous battle here on the fringe of the top 10. A queue of six, seven, eight cars, and all of them very quick, and some of them out of position as well. At the head of the field, Nick Cassidy has just put the fastest lap of the race in, 1 minute 22.2. Only a tenth quicker than Callum Eilat, though. And we're going to get a replay of all this action there. Let's have a look at this. Number 22 car. Lunging there, Joel Eriksson. He's been going a bit uh, backwards and forwards in this race, but that was a good move from the young Swedish driver. Something else that Raul Hyman was saying to me was that it looked like uh, some of the circuits we go to, Monza, Rimmel, and places like that, you know, notice that it's uh, pretty heavy on the kerbs to the eye. It doesn't seem that bad, but Raul was saying there's a lot of corners here where you take the whole car over the kerbs and you've had to raise the ride out of the cars in particular the start of the lap through turns one, two, three and four, it's pretty heavy on the curves. That's something else to have to bear in mind to not wreck the car. And here we go, Ralph Aron with a tight squeeze up the inside. He's the next one to make a move. And uh, the number 16 car gaining a place there on well, Joel Eriksson, wasn't it, number 22? Having to defend it now because he'll give the toe to Joel Eriksson. The Swedish driver comes back at him, trying to go around the outside here and gets the toe, pulls alongside. Looking at the inside of both of them then and getting one place is number 10, Nico Curry. That was a great move. Late, late, late on the brakes. Well, you two watch each other in the mirrors. I'll sneak up and get in between you. So he gets ahead of Ralph Arod now. Terrific battles going on here. Some great racecraft as well from these young drivers. You know, they're all 16, 17, 18 years of age and showing tremendous car control here. A good close racing, but it's good clean racing as well, which is great to see. So terrific battles. At the head of the field, Nick Cassidy leads the way. Callum Eilat's only 0.976 seconds behind him. There was a tenth quicker on the previous lap. Gan Yu Xu, uh, while we've been watching all of this, is third, up to third place. Mikkel Jensen, he did that a couple of laps ago, by the looks of things. Jensen is fourth, Hubert is in fifth, Tveta in sixth place. Looking for his best run in the championship so far. Larandi is seventh, Seti Gamara is eighth, Raul Hyman back of the way is ninth. And getting in amongst it all, up to 10th now, and into the points from dead last, George Russell. So well done, George, good effort. Still plenty of time to come forwards as well. Not yet at half distance. Mazipan is in 11th, Piquet's 12th, Ralph Aron 13th, Ericsson 14th, Carry in 15th, Arjun Miney from the back of the field with his new engine 16th, Cyclone Lee is 17th. We lost Landstroll, Max Gunther, Ben Barnico and Harrison Newey with the same bit of contact at the start of the race, which was as our first safety car of the year. All right, catch your breath. Focus your attention on the next battle. We've had a, a lap of calm, and it's probably not going to last for long. Here we can see Rafa on there, number 16, the young Estonian, just 18 years of age, making his mark already with a seventh place finish and a rookie podium as well. Ben Barnico was the winner in the rookie category in the first race. Guan Yuzhu did get on the rookie podium, but he leads that category at the moment. Third overall, looking for an overall podium. So whatever they've, whatever they've changed on the car, it has worked got through the incident as well which helps of course that's what you about the French drivers on for a rookie podium he's fifth overall and third best rookie in 11th place in the set that's been the Russian driver the first uh, race we had three four five rookies in the top ten now this is the blue and white machine of Pedro Piquet number five he's the next one to have a battle with Joel Ericsson and Ericsson's got ahead of him 
uh, on this lap. So that means that PK is down to 13th place, just on the fringes of the points, like it was in race number one. The leaders have just gone through. Nick Cassidy has just stretched his advantage slightly again, just over 1.1 seconds now, the gap to Callum Eilat. But third place, Wen Yu Zhu, is flying. He's quicker than both of them. 1 minute 22.2, a personal best for the Chinese driver in third place. Going to get a replay now of this uh, move. And, yep, we just joined it as it was happening, didn't we? But we saw PK running out wide. The reason he ran out wide was because Joel Eriksson had uh, slung one up the inside of him. No contact, but PK having to lose the place. Be careful not to hold each other up too much with this battle and let the top ten get away. Otherwise, they won't get uh, into the points. So, yes, Guan Yuzhu absolutely flying in third place. He took a couple of tenths out of the leaders last time around. He's 1.3 seconds behind Callum Eilat. There you can see George Russell, number 12, in tenth place. And he is on the similar pace to Raul Hyman in front of him. They're both just done personal best laps. Russell's not really catching Hyman, but they are both catching the driver ahead, Sergio Setti Kamara. So, soon, there'll be a battle for eighth place, I think, between Kamara and the flying Raul Hyman and George Russell. So lots to look forward to in the remaining quarter of an hour of this race. To remind you, slightly different format for the year in that we have 33 minutes plus one lap races. And there you can see a driver that's been in the thick of the action, Nikita Mazepin, this new high-tech GP team. They're already getting the attention of the Force India Formula One team. So he is now have to keep an eye on the mirrors because Joel Eriksson is about to pick up the toe. You can see him going under the gantry there and is he late enough on the brakes to get through no but a little bit hairy coming out of the corner is the Russian driver so Ericsson thinks about it on the way to turn two but can't get through and in turn PK is coming back after him look this is a lovely move from PK around the outside this time of the Swede to get the position great driving Ericsson twitchy under braking behind him as well but look as soon as somebody passes you you pick up their toe and you can get them back this is Turning out to be some fabulous racing. They're wheel to wheel here, almost touching wheels. The Hanker River couldn't be closer to one another. Who's going to get the line here? Still tied together. Fantastic racing. PK will have the better line for the next corner in the number five machine. And Pedro goes through. But Ericsson made life very hard and he continues to do so. Slings one up the inside. He gets it back in the next corner. Brilliant stuff from these two youngsters. Brazil versus Sweden at the moment. Sweden's coming out on top, and Estonia is not far. Uh, sorry, the uh, Finland's not far behind you either. With Nico Carey, he's the next in the queue, and Ralph Arod, the Estonian, about to make it a quartet. You'd think they were battling for the lead in the race. Not even in the points this lot, but they are going for it. Fantastic racing so far. Been impressed with the race graph from uh, PK and from Ericsson. And Ericsson's got his head down now. Look, number 22 starting to edge away from the pack it seems the motor park driver we're going to get some more slip streaming here though this time PK is giving a toe to number 10 Nico Carey it's DRS eh these guys are just slip streaming each other in the old fashioned sense of the word They're giving us some really entertaining racing use the slip stream get right on the tail of somebody coming out of the preceding corner and late 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 on the brakes but don't overcut the corner it's a fine art they're doing it very well indeed. Let's have another look at this tremendous scrap there between PK and Ericsson. Whipping it around there was PK. And then Ericsson fired it back not long after this to get the position back. Another example of the pair of them. This for about three corners they ran wheel to wheel here. Neither of them prepared to give an each. Ericsson's on the outside line here. We should mix a longer route, it's less grip, but he wouldn't give in. He gritted his teeth. Fabulous stuff. And uh, just behind them, it's about to kick off again, I think. Nico Gary then, number 10, with Ralph Aron, who slides, drifts the car onto the kerbs there, the number 16 machine, the Prima power team car. Don't forget, Ralph, for a brief moment, was second in the race at the start, so he's trying to fight his way back up. He was fourth on the grid. It's been a very, very impressive debut in F3 so far for Ralph Aron, the winner of the Italian Formula 4 championship last year. All power to get used to these 240 brake horsepower, two litre cars. But the main thing is all the area you get from the, the cars, the front and rear wings, huge amounts of downforce, which is really tested through turn four. That is the most technical, most interesting corner. Maxi Gunther was telling me yesterday, that's the one they really threw that uh, double right hand there at turn four. Really have to hang on to the car and carry huge speed through there in fourth gear. There is one for the blue and uh, white colours. 
looking at the head of the field. The gap between first and second is stabilised at one second. So Cassidy still ahead of Eilat. Here we go again. Oh, what a move from that young man, number 22, Joel Eriksson, to get another place. That puts him 11th now, ahead of Matipan. And he's found a rhythm, hasn't he? Now he's starting to fly through the field, but he's, unfortunately for him, got a huge gap ahead. Uh-oh, there's the uh, umbrellas. We know it's a bit windy. Does that mean the rain has started to fall? Probably is the answer, yes. One or two umbrellas popping up in the grandstand opposite the commentary box now over the start-finish line. So they've all got slick tyres on. This could be interesting. See one or two spots on the lens of the camera. Shouldn't be an issue just yet, but I'll keep an eye on it. Very difficult for the drivers to tell as well. So it looked bone dry, the track in race number one, but Nick Cassidy was saying, you know, the start of the lap through the first couple of corners and the last corner was actually quite slippery for the first few laps. I wasn't quite sure how much grip was there. The middle of the lap was dry. And it's definitely started to uh, get a little bit heavier now. It's very light rain still. But any kind of surface water, any kind of rain on those slick tyres at these speeds, that's going to be uh, incredibly hairy indeed. So we'll keep an eye on it. At the moment, no dramas. There is number six, Callum Bylock. Now, in the lead of the race, what's up to Nick Cassidy? Won it 26.6 last time around. He had a slow lap, so as he got caught out, as he had a moment with the uh, with the rain, we've got a new leader. Guan Yuzhu is up to second. Nick Cassidy's still there, but he's down to third. So Callum Bylock up into first place in the race, looking for his first win. What a turnaround. He had no chassis and no engine two days ago when the car caught fire. And the stunning drive through to 10th place from the back of the field earlier on today, despite not being able to see the start and finish lights. And uh, he's in a good place at the moment. Very complimentary about the Van Amersfoort team, about the new livery, where they're presenting themselves, the new premises, it's all going in the right direction for that future experienced team of 40 years racing in single-seaters. Also running probably four as well. Right? Michael Schumacher Jr. from the four um, last year. Now the rain, you can see on the lens there, Definitely looking like it's going to get a little bit thicker for the times like, yeah, everybody's losing some time now. 123s, 124s for most people, and they'll start to run wide and understeer. Michael Jensen there, number seven. Saw in front of him, Nick Cassidy, whose pace is OK again now. 123.8 for Callum Eilat, who's loving the conditions. 124.0 for Guan Yu Zhu in second place. Tremendous drive, this. Uh, if he can get second place in his second race of Formula 3, Bearing in mind that Guan Yuzhu started the race in 13th position, that will be very interesting. Now, black and white flag, which means warning driving behaviour, and that is being given to number 22, Joel Eriksson, who's been involved in one or two uh, battles, let's say. And so he's been given the warning, he's being watched, but no penalty as yet. Callum Eilat then leads by 1.3 seconds. It's already a bit of a mistake for former race leader Nick Cassidy. So, Van Amersfoort Racing lead, Motor Park with Juan Yuzhu in second place, third place Prema with Nick Cassidy. Michael Jensen for Buka Motorsport in the number seven car is in fourth place. Antoine Huber is in fifth position. Number 21 car, the French driver, looking for his first points. He's another Van Amersfoort Racing driver. Number three for Carlin is Ryan Tevita in sixth place. Alessio Larandi for Carlin in seventh. Sergio Sete Camara, Raul Hyman and George Russell still in the points as well. And uh, here we go. This is the Italian, Alessio Lorandi, in the number four car, hunting down. Ryan Smetta there, the number three machine. And having a think about it, the 21 year old Ryan Smetta, two tenth place finishes last year. But this will be his best performance so far in F3. For the car in Team Black. Their car's working well, certainly, haven't they, with him? Lorandi, Hyman, all making good progress in the race. Just under seven minutes left to go. Once the clock ticks down to zero, then it'll be another lap on top of that. So we'll do another complete lap at the end of the time ticking down to zero. And that could make all the difference with the weather looking more and more dodgy out there. One minute 23.3s now for all but two of our top six. It's telling me that it's starting to get a bit grippier. So that rain, I think, is going to well, or be less of an issue, at least, for the drivers. It's still uh, not quite flying along like they were. The fastest lap of the race was 122.2, and everybody's a bit quicker than they were a couple of laps ago now. 23.3 for Eilat, 123.4 this time, 123.6 for you. So, Callum Eilat's consistently a couple of tenths quicker than anybody in these conditions, loving that 
great car control from him. And just uh, enjoy the conditions, really explore the limits here. You don't quite know how much grip you're going to get when you go into the corners. There's a certain amount of bravery, but an awful lot of calculation required here. And mostly just a feel of the car and reacting to what you get when you come into the corners. You have to react to the changing conditions as well, because if that suddenly stops to dry out more, the rain goes away. You're going to have to start going back to your braking points that you were on at the start of the race. Oh, Ralph Aron has had it off. The left uh, rear is deflated, and he's had a, a big off there, Ralph Aron. You can see the tyre marks off the racing line, and what happened? Tyre came off. That's what caused the spin by the looks of things. Now, he was back on his own as well, so I wonder if there was something earlier that dropped him back from the pack he was in and maybe started to cause that deflation of the tyre wheel off as well, so the tyre off as well, so completely away from the wheel and Ralph on happily avoided the barriers and it's going to bring the safety car out for the second time in the race. Devastating news that for Callum Eilert who built up a nice one and a half second lead at the head of the pack. There is the number 18 of the Zycon Lee car, the Carlin car. There you can see. Tireless. Left corner. Yeah, the tyre's coming away from the hub of the wheel and completely out of control of the wheel as well. The brake disc is still there, isn't it? But uh, either way, he was out of control. Lance Stroll, who's been a spectator for most of the race here after winning uh, race number one. So it's been a difficult race, this, for Braver. They lost Lance. Nick Cassidy was leading the race, and something went awry a few laps ago to drop him a few seconds and two places down to third position. And then we've lost Ralph Aron as well, so and Max Gunther as well. So there's only one of the four Braver cars left in the race. It is in a podium paint position, but it might not win the race yet. How long have we got left to go? Only three minutes, 40 seconds. They've got to clear this up. So it's touch and go whether we're going to get going again in this race. If we do, it might only be a lap or so. So safety car bunches the field up. Callum Eilat leads the race. Guan Yu Zhu in an excellent second is the best rookie. Nick Cassidy in third place, the former race leader. Michael Jensen in fourth. Antoine Hubert in fifth. Ryan Tevetta in sixth. Lorandi is 7th, Seti Kamara 8th, Hyman 9th, Russell 10th. A look at the start again here, which took out those Prima cars. Terrible start for Maxi Gunther. Keep an eye on Ben Barneycoat here, number 24 at the inside. Looks like a lock-up, he goes over the curbs, that launches him then into the side of several of the cars. The one he hit first was Lance Stroll, so, and then it was a chain reaction. So Lance is actually the first one to get struck. Uh, but then he, he span around on himself and was held in the distance, and it was the other three that sort of went into the fore of the shot. Matt Gunther, there he is, very, very annoyed about all of that. Harrison Newey and Ben Barneycoat, head in hands. Oh, dear. And Ralph Aron has had a difficult race as well. What caused the... Uh, Certain something must have happened before that because, as I say, he was sort of going around on his own anyway, whereas he was in that battle for 12th place involving the likes of Joel Erickson, Nikita Mazipen, Pedro Piquet. And here's another look at the fantastic battle between Piquet number five and Erickson number 22, who've been running shoulder to shoulder through several corners on several laps of the race so far, trying to get the upper hand on one another just in front of the Mazzy uh, Pen has been uh, involved in these battles as well. And has dropped him out of the top 10 now, Mazzy Pen. Ericsson's just outside of the top 10 in 11th. This was the move, wasn't it, from Ericsson? It looked like all was lost. He just fired one up the inside there. PK had nowhere to turn in. There was a car in his way. Safety car goes past the start-finish line, so it's going to be at least another lap behind the safety car. The lap time behind the safety car is 1 minute 37, and they crossed the line with 1 minute 34 to go. So the time's going to be up before they get back. Screech of tyres there. Ralph Aron was just a passenger in all of that. Luckily, there's lots of runoff here. Off goes the tyre down the road, and he stopped in time before having any real damage to the car by hitting the barrier. So the driver will be absolutely fine physically, and that 
it should take too much work to fix the car. So a lot of drivers have had one good race, and one very difficult race so far. Callum Eilat's had two good races. He's leading this one, tenth in the first race. Nick Cassidy is going to get the championship lead if it stays like this, and it could do now with only 47 seconds left on the clock. He's third at the moment, had a second earlier on. Michael Jensen's had fourth here, but that difficult first race. Hubert, Tevita, Lorandi, Kamara and Hyman are all in the points, but weren't in the points in the first race. George Russell had a third in race number one and has come back well to be tenth here. Good and bad for him. The safety cars bunch everybody up, but while there's a safety car, he hasn't got any opportunity to overtake anybody. Safety car is coming in on this lap, though. The clock is going to tick down to zero, but it's 33 minutes plus one lap. So we're going to get a lap of racing here. You can see how much curb they're using. I was talking about the curb earlier on. I wonder if there's any suspension damage as well. No, it was the whole wheel. It's hard to tell from the other angle. But it was the, the wheel completely coming away. The brake disc all left there in place. But yeah, so that was broken either from contact with another car or maybe the curbs. The tire was deflated as well. And Ralph, as I say, main thing is that he's OK. So they've cleared the incident. We're going to get one lap of racing. Oh dear, for Callum Eilat, he would would quite like to see the chequered flag and another lap behind the safety car. But he's going to have to fend off Guan Yu Zhu there in the red and yellow machine, who is not afraid to have a go. Let me tell you, I've commentated on him for a couple of years when he was kart racing in Europe, and he is somebody that likes to have a go at overtaking. Nick Cassidy would love to get higher up than third, having led most of the race. Michael Jensen doesn't really want to finish fourth, does he, when there's a podium just in front of him. So here we go, racing for one lap, a minute and a half to see who's going to win the race. Callum Arlott's made a good start. Guan Yu is coming under pressure here from Nick Cassidy behind Ryan Spencer and Lorandia are coming close together as well. Inside line here for Guan Yu He's held the position. He runs a bit deep into the corner, though, and the red and white machine of Nick Cassidy fires one through at turn two and gets second. Lorandi's got off behind and uh, gone wide and gifted a, a place or two. Raul Hyman and uh, George Ressler are running wheel to wheel for ninth place as well. Sergio Seti Kamara involved in that. Lorandi again going offline and all over the curbs to try and get himself back in the mix. I think it's still very greasy out there as well. And the tyre temperatures will have cooled also. Callum Eilert casually glances in the mirrors on course for his first win ever in Formula 3. And he's pulling away from them on this, the final lap of the race. Helped by that battle that was going on behind. Here comes Lorandi again, number four, queuing up behind Sergio Sete Camara to try and uh, get another place up the road. Battling for, was it seventh place? Ryan Spencer just in front of them, hanging on and driving very well, actually, in the number three Carling car. Half a lap to go then for Callum Eilat. And he's uh, continuing to edge away in the middle sector, I reckon, from Guan Yu Zhu, who is, uh, uh, sorry, from Nick Cassidy, who's uh, got past Guan Yu Zhu, as we saw, the second corner. And here we go, around the outside, Sergio Sede Camara to get the inside line for the next corner and get past Ryan Vetter. And that's then uh, the number 21 car of Antoine Huber making a mistake and losing several places when he was on for a top six finish. The chequered flag is ready. The first man to see the chequered flag is going to be Callum Eilat. He wins the race. Cassidy second, Guan Yu Zhu in third place. And the best rookie, Jensen fourth, Sete Camara fifth, Lorandi sixth, Vetter in seventh, Huber demoted to eighth. Joel Eriksson ninth, Raul Hyman tenth, and George Russell in the end misses the points. Eleventh place for him after that scramble on the uh, last lap of the race. But an absolutely wonderful drive from Callum Eilat in greasy, slippery conditions. He definitely had the edge on the others. Nick Cassidy having led most of the race up until the point where the rain came. We'll maybe find out what happened uh, to him. It was all looking so good, wasn't it? It was comfortably a second, 1.2 seconds clear of Callum Eilat, then suddenly, what bad lap, down to third place he went. But at least he got second place back, Nick Cassidy. Good move on Guan Yu Zhu, just using that bit more experience, I guess, and attacking. Guan Yu Zhu gave a firm defence, it has to be said, and wasn't going to be uh, bullied out of the way by a more experienced driver, but in the end, the New Zealander came through. The Chinese driver, though, will be well happy with third place from 13th on the grid, and of course, he's the best rookie. So he's top rookie, he'll be on the rookie podium. Antoine Hubert will get his first rookie podium, second uh, in the class, but uh, eighth overall. He's slightly bittersweet, that, because he was looking like he would finish fifth or sixth in the race and then went off the road with a couple of corners to go. And Joel Eriksson, who was uh, giving us some real entertainment there, uh, the Swedish driver, finishes as the third best rookie in ninth place. So some standout drives there, some great battles. Eriksson, Hyman, 
in the thick of the action. Glad you you driving very, very well indeed. I think for his car control in what is incredibly difficult conditions and the way he's bounced back, Callum Eilert deserving of the victory there. Van Amersfoort have had a tough weekend so far, but uh, it could change in a flash, can't it? That's why you've got never to give up. It can all come back to you. If you've got the talent, you don't have any bad luck, you can get yourself back up there. You've got to stay positive. They've all been around long enough to know that sometimes it's any control, things can go wrong. It went wrong for the start of the weekend, but uh, not so anymore. Callum Eilert wins for Van Amersfoort Racing. Second place for Prema, Nick Cassidy. And third place for Motor Park, Guan Yuju. Nicole Jensen picks up fourth place and some points for Vuka Motorsport. Coming into this race, Prema Power Team had uh, taken the most points from race one with 35 from their two drivers, their two name drivers being Max Gunther and uh, Lance Stroll. So Prema are not going to pick up any points for the team championship from that race. You can see Raul Hyman there, and wide off the curbs. <laughs> it was a real scramble, wasn't it? These four, five, six drivers hopping, skipping over the curbs, front wheels up, drag race to the chequered flag. Tremendous driving. Oh, that was something we didn't see. That was number 18, Zai Gong Li, having a uh, spin over steering through the corner. And uh, luckily, nobody collected him. Oh, uh, well, what a race that was. Fantastic entertainment from the championship. Guan Yu Zhu there. You can see why Ferrari have got their eye on him, can't you? And uh, certainly I can say from having been uh, lucky enough to commentate on him for a couple of years as he came up through karting, he was one that stood out. You thought, yes, this guy is the real deal. He's good. They all come from karting. They're all successful, of course, but uh, great maturity from Wen Yu Zhu. And it's a fantastic drive from him. It's going to be difficult this year, isn't it, to to get consistent results because there are so many good, talented young drivers in there. There's Callum Eilock, big smile on the face. Fantastic effort from uh, him. He's had a good day, hasn't he, all in all? That drive through the field in race number one, the 17-year-old. On the podium at the Nürburgring last year, but this is his first victory in the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. I think drivers getting uh, weighed now. That weight added to the car to make sure they meet the minimum weight limit requirement. Joel Erickson there with just uh, some stunning moves. Tremendous battle with uh, PK. Uh, PK hasn't picked up any points yet, but I tell you what, he's going to, isn't he? If he keeps driving like that, he's uh, he's real a real fighter, as you'd expect really from a PK. And uh, see why he's got quite a big fan base in Brazil and uh, why he's so popular. Great to watch. The points will come, that's for sure. He didn't get any today. 14th in the end for PK. We had a great battle with that man, Joel Eriksson, who's going up the steps to take his trophy. Third best rookie, Antoine Huber, in second in the rookie standings. And when you, of course, will get two trophies. Third overall and third uh, first best rookie. And a more international mix you couldn't have in the top ten. A Brit wins. A Kiwi second. A Chinese driver third. A Danish driver fourth. Brazilian fifth. Italian sixth, American seventh, French driver in eighth, Swedish ninth, and a South African in tenth place. There, then, confirmation of the results on screen. 23 laps, couple laps less than we had in race one because of the safety cars. And uh, fairly impressive, that. Winning by 1.2 seconds, Callum Eilock. Bearing in mind they were all breathing down his neck and there was only one lap after the safety car. He controlled it nicely, helped, of course, by the fact that Cassidy had to fight his way into second place, Pasquale Nugio on that last lap, and that gave Callum at the break. But in all honesty, he made such a good restart, I think he would have been hard to catch anyway. A real shame for high-tech GP and for George Russell, after all that work, to miss out on the points in 11th. So there was his first taste of a top step of a podium in cars in Formula 3's Callum Eilert. He raced in the Toyota Series, did his first year in cars last year. He was the European karting champion in 2014. It's not taken him long to get up there, has it? Speaking of the Toyota Racing Series, the single-seater racing series in New Zealand, there's a man who's won it twice, Nick Cassidy, and he'll move into the championship lead with a two-second place finishes. And there is Guan Yuju, fabulous effort. 13th to third, the Ferrari Academy driver up onto the podium, and we'll now hear the national anthem of Callum Eilert, our race winner here in Paul Ricard.
la Grande-Bretagne. Time for our trophies to be presented to our top three overall. Carla Myla, tremendous drive. He's going to be up at the sharp end of the grid for tomorrow's race as well. And we've got Adrian Newey here to present some of the trophies. There is the first place trophy. Father of Harrison Newey has now become, of course, better known. But of course, what a career that man has had. Started his Formula One career with March, developing sports cars before that. He only designed to win titles in Formula 1 with Williams, McLaren and Red Bull. His cars have won over 80 Grand Prix. Quite an effort. And Charles Leclerc there, nice to see him back. Raced with the championship last year, of course, Charles Leclerc. Fantastic driver is uh, Charles and uh, great to see that his career is developing and he's, uh, he's moving on he presents the trophy for second place to Nick Cassidy. Charles Leclerc moving into GP3 this year, the ART Grand Prix, and has joined the Ferrari Academy as well, like this man, Guan Yu Zhu. So uh, two F3 related drivers there in the Ferrari Academy. In fact, three of the four drivers in the Ferrari Development Academy have F3 backgrounds. The other one being Anto Antonio uh, Fuoco, who raced a couple of years ago in the FIA European Formula 3 Championship. So, time for the photographs. Callum Arlott. And the uh, right of him, left of our picture, Nick Cassidy. When you see so Callum's left in that third place trophy. Down to the collection, but that will be the most special. Won plenty of uh, trophies last year. Was a race winner in Italian Formula 4. And they can enjoy the champagne spray a bit more now because they've got a few hours off. They're not racing again till tomorrow. Van Amersford, of course, the winning team. They're up there to collect their uh, team trophy. And uh, hard work has got on there. So while we wait for our rookie podium, we'll have a few highlights now of what was a very, very lively second race of the season, second race of the day here at Paul Ricard. So uh, the podium is clear. We're going to have our uh, rookie podium now, brought to you by Sonax. And our top three will head up. Guan Yu the winner, third overall, will be coming back to get his second trophy. Antoine Hubert was eighth overall and the second best rookie. Joel Eriksson gets his first taste of uh, F3 podium life as well, with ninth place overall, a battling ninth place performance. Got into the points overall and was the third best rookie. And again, we're going to have Adrian Newey. He's taken 10 Formula One Constructors uh, Drivers' Championships now with his cars to present some of the trophies. And Charles Leclerc, who himself was the rookie champion last year and uh, managed to finish in the end in fourth place in the overall championship. It was a, a real title contender for a long time, but Felix Rosenquist won in the end with a very strong second half of the season. Antonio Giovinazzi was second. Jake Dennis was third in the championship last year and Charles Leclerc uh, fourth, all four of them having moved on. And they're onto the top step, Guan Yuzhu the top rookie representing China, representing France and taking second place, Antoine Hubert. And from Sweden, we'll have Joel Eriksson to move up onto the podium as well. Got another race to come, of course, tomorrow. Local time here in France, the race starts at 10.30 in the morning. We'll be on air 10 minutes before that at 10.20. For those of you watching the live coverage for a Another race here in Paul Ricard. 60% chance of rain. What will it bring? Here then, the national anthem of Guan Yuzhu.
So now it'll be time for Adrian Newey and Charles Leclerc to present the trophies once again. As I said, 10 Formula One Constructors Championships for this design genius, Adrian Newey, more than anybody else has ever achieved. Not a, not a bad racing driver himself either, has to be said. Raced at Le Mans in 2007 in a Ferrari, of all things. In F430, finished fourth in class. It's competed in various historic races over the years, and events uh, such as Goodwood. Wasn't to be for Harrison in that second race, but he'll be pleased with the way Harrison is done driving the first. So he presents the uh, trophy to a very uh, chilled, despite all the battles, looking Joel Erickson. Glad to use you. Antoine Hubert to the left, uh, Joel Eriksson to the right. Our top three rookie drivers here. Guan Yuzhu, the 16-year-old, based in Maranello now, with his Ferrari links, but he hails from Shanghai. And the Motor Park team have their man on the top step of the podium here at Paul Ricard. What a race that was. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. And the drivers will now dust themselves down, ready for tomorrow's race. Hope you enjoyed the action from Paul Ricard. More racing to come in tomorrow, and it promises to be just as entertaining as what we've seen here. Thanks very much for joining us. From me, Chris Hartley, and the team, it's goodbye from now from Paul Ricard, the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. <laughs>